Today we're going to be discussing the JVA PET electric fence systems from the selection of the units to the actual kit. What I have in front of me here is the basic kit that we can buy off the shelf. This comes with a PET electric fence energizer. So the PET series comes with a PET series manual. The PET 100 unit um, works from your mains. It does come with additional battery leads so that you can run it off a battery. But the problem with the battery is the battery over time will go flat and you've got to keep recharging it. So you need a recharger, a battery and the energizer. For me, if you're going to go the route of wanting to run it on battery, rather use the solar unit. Javier has a little SV2, which is an all-in-one solar and battery unit. And what's great there is you can place it anywhere along your fence line. As long as it's in the sun, you can have 24-7 operation, 365 days a year. The kit comes with 200 meters of poly wire. Poly wire is a plastic wire with stainless steel fibers plated in with it. It means that the current will flow through it, but it's very easy to work with. And I like green because it matches in with the garden, but the wire is also available in orange and white. Next up in the kit, we have a warning sign. Uh, it's a legal requirement just to make people aware of electric fence. So you have a warning sign to hang on the fence so anybody can see it's there. The kit comes with 10 meters of undergate cable. This is the cable that goes from the energizer to the fence. In it is also ferrules. This is to clamp the wire onto the fence. From the energizer to the fence, it gives you about five meters. You can normally put your earth spike near the fence. If your distance from your energizer to the fence is going to be longer, we do have the cable available in 50 meter lengths and 100 meter lengths as well. These are the spring clips. These go over the JBA fiberglass poles and are there for your wires to slide through. Normally you put three on a post, giving you three wires for your fence. That's the top of the kit. It comes with installation manual. Underneath the box, we have the galvanized earth spike with a clamp on it. This is vital for the need for earthing of the fence, which we'll cover later. Then we have the fiberglass posts. These are insulated posts, current can't flow through them, ideal to knock into the garden. Out the box it comes with eight posts. If the fence distance is further and you require more, we sell these separately. And what additional JVA accessories you might need? Like I said, you can get extensions for the fence, buying more posts. Um, another suggestion, if you have a gate in your system, we'll show that a little bit later, is the plastic gate handle. You're able to hold it, it won't shock. The current flows through the handle, through the internal of it and along the fence line, but you can open the gate and let your dogs out if you're going for a walk. Things that you're gonna need when putting up your fence. Everything's provided in the kit, but you are gonna need a, a mallet or a hammer to knock your posts in, and then some form of fencing pliers. Standard normal pliers, or like here, these are Knipex nose peak pliers. These are the only two tools you're gonna need to put up your fence. The JVA Energizer is 100% safe. What it does is it takes the 220 volt input or the input from the battery, it steps it up to a short, sharp jab of a pulse. So it has a high voltage but very low amperage and a very, very short duration. So what the dog or animal touching the fence gets is a quick slap. Every second, the unit pulses down the fence line. That short jab is enough to give the dog a fright, make it back off and back away from the fence but it does absolutely no damage to the animal, cat, human, horse. The energizers have been used in the agricultural environment for countless years and are 100% safe. So let's see and understand how electric fence works. Well, for an electric fence to work, you need three components. The energizer, the earthing system, and the fence line. The energizer will give an electric pulse down the fence. In order for the system to work, the current needs to return back to the energizer through the ground, closing the circuit. A bird can sit in the wire and not get shocked, as it is not earthed. But if your dog were to touch the wire, the current would have a path to ground, closing the circuit through the dog, giving him a shock. Right, the planning phase. The house I'm at today, there's a filter box quite close to the area I want to secure. They have boxer dogs, which are quite high. So I'm gonna have my fence wires quite high on my post. And the area, main area of concern for them is over there, where the dogs are barking at people when they walk past the premises. So I need to stop the dogs getting into that corner. I've chosen to use the PET 100 kit as it comes, because I have the mains nearby. The first thing I start by doing is taking out the posts and sliding on the clips. 
As the ground is fairly moist, it's green grass. I can use a live only system, so I'm not worrying about going live earth. Because we've got boxes and they're fairly big dogs, I'm going with three strands. They're spring loaded, so I just squeeze them slightly, put them on. I like putting it with the spike facing up because it makes it easy to clamp the wire in. Here we have the three lines ready. I'm then going to do this on all the other posts and then I'm ready to knock them in the ground. Now I'm ready to place the posts out. Easiest just to space them evenly so I can work out the contours. Just walk along. I don't like going much further than about four meters between posts. Got an angle over here. On the spur. Okay, so now we just knock them all in. Okay, here we have the poly wire. You can see the green plastic and the stainless steel entwined in it. Right at your starting point, put a ferrule. That's where I'm gonna bring my cable from my energizer on and clamp it on with. And I personally like to start at the bottom of my fence because that's where I'm gonna bring my undergate on. Okay, at the start, make my knot. I've got my ferrule on the bottom wire. As you can see how easy it is to work with a poly wire. My ferrule's at the bottom because that's where I'm gonna bring my cable from my energizer up and join it on at this point. From here, and I'll go around my fence. Because it's an all live circuit, I can use a series circuit. So it's a quick and simple process of threading it through each of the clips. At the end point now, as I'm doing live wires only, I'm just gonna carry on through this point and take it up to where I'm starting my next section. Before I cut and tie my poly wire, I make sure that my whole fence is tensioned up. So you just a quick walk around the fence, making sure that it's tense the whole way around. At the end of my series fence, I'm gonna knot this off. Sometimes you'll find like here, when I put a bit of tension on the post, um, it could be a good idea to tie it to the tree or something just to create a, a bit of a stay there. Remember, this is fiberglass. Although this is metal, it's insulated by the fiberglass pole. The last thing you wanna do is have your wire touching something that's gonna to short to ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this off, get my fence reasonably sturdy, and then I'm going to take a short piece of poly wire and tie it from here to the tree, just to have my strain pole nice and sturdy. A cable tie will do the same job as well. Okay, poly wire easy to work with. I'm just going to cut it off with a little bit of lead just so I've got some space to work with. Tie a knot at the end here. I actually tie it so it bends the post a little bit. Um, this creates a bit of tension in the post. On my knot, I'm cutting off the end here. When I cut off the ends, if you take a latch or something and neaten up, remember it's a rope. What I would like to do here is now tension it to the tree. I've got luckily a tree right nearby, so I can create a, a stronger post if I want. To do this, as I have poly wire with me, I utilize the poly wire, but remember the tree must not make any contact with the live wires. So what I'm doing here is I've tied it halfway up the fiberglass shaft. It's not touching the wires in any way, but I'm using it to support and tie it to the tree, and that's creating the rigidity to give a bit of strength in my fence. Your wire doesn't have to be very tight. This is fine, if the dog touches it, he'll get his shock. Um, it just needs to be finger tight. I'm now at the pool filter and I'm gonna do the energizer installation. The cables that come with the energizer are the 12 volt power supply. We're not using a battery, so I don't need that. It also comes with leads from, from the energizer to the fence. If your energizer can be very close to the start of the fence, we could be using these. But my issue here is it's about three or four meters to the fence. So what I'm gonna use is the 10 meters of cable that came with it. I'm gonna need two sections, one to my earth spike, which is gonna place in the ground, and a second piece to take from the energizer to the ferrule in the fence. On the back of the energizer, there's spade terminals. So what I've done is I've just got a spade terminal that I'm going to slide on there and clamp it on neatly. Not the correct tool, but it works. And then just to bring it into the filter box as neat as possible, there's a hole in the side here. So I'm going to thread it through. It's good. 
Note it's not plugged in, it's not connected in any way, but we need to know how much cable we're gonna to need to get to the fence. Okay, I'm now at the fence. Later on, we'll trench it and do a neat job. We can even put it in a conduit. But just for the demonstration here, I get my cable to where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take it neatly once I've made my trench up onto the ferrule. So at this point, I'm gonna cut the, the cable. And again, I'm gonna splice a piece off the end. We'll be able to put a cable tie on later, but for now, I'm just threading it in here neatly. I like to twist it around and make as much contact between the poly wire, the stainless steel threads and the poly wire and the undergate. You then slide the ferrule on and then with the crimping tool just crimp it nice and neatly maximizing the contact and making it strong. Okay we've installed the fence, we've got the energizer almost in. The third part is the earthing and it's a vital part. If you look at the earth spike it's very long, it's so I can get deep into the ground. It's heavy duty and it's very thick. This gives maximum coverage in the ground to give you a good earth. Wherever the dog touches the fence along the fence line, the current needs to come back to the earth spike. So I've picked a spot at least two meters away from any mains point. I've checked the ground. I can see the irrigation pipes aren't nearby and I can see the electrical pipes are going that way back to the house. So I've chosen this spot, not too far, and I'm gonna knock it into the ground. Okay, before I go all the way into the ground, I'm just going to make sure I've connected my earth cable. It's going to be a lot easier to do it up here. Do it nice. It's very important that it's clamped in there tight. And I'll get a spanner later and tighten that properly, but it must be securely clamped. And then I knock it all the way into the ground. The reason I chose this spot is it's a moist area. You can see the plants are nice and succulent. There's sprinklers in this area and it's nice and wet. If this was a very dry area, or the ground around here was very hard, what we'd be doing is not only having a cable going back to the energizer, but take this cable and extend it onto the fence, and then what I would have done is run the second wire on this fence as a negative wire, so we'll have a live, negative, live setup. That means if the animal touches the fence and he touches between the top wire and the middle wire, he'll get shocked between the two wires. It won't matter if he's standing on concrete or on very dry ground. Lastly, I'm going to knock the earth spike into the ground as far as I can and then I'll, as it's in the garden and some could step on it, I'd probably put a plastic cap or something on over to create a bit of protection from anybody standing on it. From my earth stakes, I've threaded the cable back, I've put a spade connector on it and I connect it to my negative terminal on my energizer. My earthing system's complete, my fence is complete, my energizer is ready to be plugged in we're ready to test. I'll plug in the energizer, plug it into the power, and switch my mains back on. Now I'm ready to fire, and I push the power button on the energizer, and it's flashing green. All is good, there are no problems on the fence line. You should at all times try to keep your fence as clean as possible. Vegetation does drain it of some power, but this meter here will simulate what an animal gets. That's the earth electrode. That would be his feet standing in the ground. And then I take the positive and I put it on the fence there. And I'm sitting with about five and a half thousand volts on the fence line, even with all the grass and vegetation on the fence. three parts of the electric fence were the energizer, the earthing system and the fence. But all the dog sees is the fence and he begins to associate this wire with the short sharp slap he receives. As a result of this, not only have you got your electric fence, but wherever you place this wire, even when it's not fired up, he generally feels it. It's great if you just brought back new furniture for the veranda, put a few strands of this on top of it and the dogs will stay well away from it. You've seen how to do a basic pet fence, let's go take a look at some other fences in the neighborhood. On this site, the pool filter is miles away, so there's no electricity nearby, so we've chosen to go with a solar unit. The sun is over there. It's going east to west, so we face the solar panel true north in the southern hemisphere. 
We have the earth spike in the ground down here. As I say, the energizer doesn't have to be at the start or the end of the fence. It's actually connected here in the middle of the fence. Green terminal going to the earth spike. Red terminal going to the fence. As they have various gardens, there's a vegetable patch over there. There's another garden over there. And the Great Danes are destroying all of them. We've set up one fence here, then using the undergate cable, we've led from this fence to the vegetable patch, and also from this box to that box over there around the back of the cable. So each bed is protected by itself. In this house, there's an access gate to the front of the garden where the people want to leave with the dogs. The energizer is over there at the filter box. The power comes to the first bed, then it comes along here, along the fence line where it gets this point. If we put gate handles in, the gate handle is plastic, it won't shock you. We always have the joiner for the gate on the side where the electric fence is coming from. This means that the second the gates are undone, this section of the fence goes dead and these wires are able to be touched. So if the kids or anybody takes the handle off and it touches their leg, there's no issue of being shocked. As soon as they've gone through the gate and they want to reattach it, as soon as it's hooked back on, the current is going to come through the fence, through the handle and back along the fence line and the rest of the beds are now live. The dogs are used to it. If it's taken off, they know they can come through. Come Harry. This little SV2 energizer is protecting this garden. This fence is over five years old. The lady who owns this house wanted a permanent electric fence. She wanted something a bit neater. So we installed the SV2 solar unit and then used proper steel mounted brackets the reason for this fence is to stop Lego barns. It's a monitor lizard coming in and eating her vegetables and at the same time stopping her chow getting out the garden or barking at other dogs coming past. So what we've got here is we've got a permanent fence. We've used wire instead of poly wire. There's a little spring tensioner, steel brackets with insulators on and neatly taken around to create a protective barrier right along the front of the house so the dog wouldn't try to jump over or bark at other dogs passing the house. Having three golden retrievers was not easy, they destroyed my garden. But since we put up the fence, it took one small shock and now my garden is looking beautiful again. Once we were swimming and the ball went in the plants and my dad forgot to switch the fence off and I got shocked, but it wasn't that so I didn't even cry. Thank you for watching our JBA installation video. As you can see, easy to install and very safe for your pets and kids alike. For any more information, please take a look at our JBA websites.